Hi guys, this is Abhi from Gokche Design. Here are the eight things you need to know about the curves adjustment in Photoshop. Number one, in the RGB channel, curves adjustment is used to lighten or darken parts of the image. Let's take a look. I'm going to click on the adjustments tab and then select curves to bring up the curves window. The graph that you see is called a histogram. It represents pixel information from our image. The left side of the graph represents the dark pixel information and the right side of the graph represents the light pixel information. Visually inspecting the image, you can see there's more darks than lights and hence there's more information on the left side of our graph than the right side. Now, if I drag my curve up, it's going to make my image lighter. And if I drag it down, it's going to make my image darker. Now, I want you to pay careful attention to this slide, because if you don't understand what I'm going to explain next, it's going to make mastering curves almost impossible. So here are the two main things you need to understand. First, RGB or the gray tonal scale has a range of 0 to 255, where 0 is black and 255 is white. Let's look at it with an example. Here, I have a black to white gradient on a white background, and I'm going to use the color picker to inspect the RGB values. Watch what happens to the RGB values when I click on the black side of the gradient and slowly move down. You can see the values increase from zero all the way to 255 when I reach all white. Now that you understand the RGB tonal scale, let's look at what this white line represent in the curves graph. Here I have a zoomed in version of the curves graph with plotted tonal values. We now know that the tonal scale goes from zero to 255. The grid lines in the graph are dividing my horizontal x-axis and vertical y-axis into four equal parts of 64. In other words, if you divide 0 to 255, which is 256, by 4, you'll get 64. This should explain the plotted values of 0, 63, 127, and so on, on both the x and y-axis. Now it's time to understand what the x and the y-axis represent. The horizontal x-axis represents the input or the original tonal values. The vertical y-axis represent the output or the new adjusted values. This should explain why in the default view, when we haven't made any changes, a straight diagonal line is shown on the graph. In other words, if you try plotting a sample point on the line right now, say 63, 63, it would indicate that the value of 63 on a tonal range remains unchanged. Say I add a new point on the curves line and drag it up a bit. Let's change the input value to 63 and the output value to 127. Let's look at a zoomed in version of the new graph. This time, the original solid diagonal line is represented by a thin black line, and the solid white line represents the current state of the image. And it should be much easier to understand that the solid white dot on the line represents 63,127, which means 63 was the old or the original value, and 127 is the new adjusted tonal value. Number three, the curves graph is divided into three sections, shadows, highlights, and midtones. Let's go back to our example. The lower section of the graph represents shadows, the middle section represents midtones, and the upper section represents highlights. To make my shadows lighter, I'm going to drag the curves line up in my shadows area drag down to make them darker. Similarly, you can make the midtones lighter or darker by dragging the curves line 
up or down in the center area. And same thing with highlights in the top area. Note you can add up to a maximum of 14 control points on the curve. This should give you enough flexibility to lighten or darken your highlights, shadows, and midtone areas to your liking. Also, to remove a control point, just drag it off the graph. Number four, hand tool allows you to dynamically see the points on the curve line when you hover over the image. Let's take a look. This is my favorite feature in curves. So click on the hand tool. Notice as I hover over the image, the control point on the curves line changes depending on how light or bright the pixel is. As I hover over the light areas of the image, you can see the control point on the right side of the graph. And here's the cool part. You can drag up or down right from the image to lighten or darken the area. Number five, use the red, green, or blue channels from the curves dropdown for color correction. This time, instead of selecting RGB, I'm going to select red from the curves dropdown. Note the opposite of red is cyan. So dragging the curves line up will increase the reds in the image and dragging it down will increase the cyans in the image. Similarly, if I were to pick green and drag it up, it's going to increase the greens. Dragging it down will increase the magenta. You can also play around with the blues and yellows in the blue channel. The hand tool works in the color channels as well. Dragging it up in the blue channel will increase the blues. Dragging it down will increase the yellows. Number six, use the three eyedroppers to sample in the image to set black, gray, or white points. Let's take a look. The first eyedropper will let you set black point the second one will let you set gray point. The third one will let you set white point. Let's select the first eyedropper and choose a black point from this image. As soon as I click on it, you'll notice the change in the image. Next, I'm going to select a white point. Let's zoom in to sample a white point from the road. Using the eyedroppers can help with white balance in certain scenarios without having to manually play around with the curves line. Number seven, pencil tool allows you to draw your own curves line. Let's look at it in action. Here, if I click on the pencil tool, it allows me to draw my own curves line. I can also use the smooth tool, which is right below it, to smoothen the drawn line. Number eight, hold the option key on a Mac or Alt key in Windows to get a preview of image details when adjusting the white or black sliders. Going back to our earlier example, notice how I don't have a lot of pixel information in the right 10% of the graph. Now watch what happens when I move this white slider to the left to say a value of 214. This will essentially replace all pixels with tonal values of 214 and above with 255, thereby increasing the exposure in our image. Now, if you wanna see how much of the image data was lost, just hold the option key while you're dragging to see a preview of what's being lost. This will allow you to set your black or white sliders more accurately depending on how much of image data you're willing to lose. There you have it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. Until next time.